Okay, we should be live. I'm just plugging in my headset because I forgot to plug it in. So I should probably test that my headset's currently working. Uh, welcome everybody um, to this Thursday Let's Code session. Uh, while you are joining, if you would like to get your local WordPress environment ready for the session, there is a new plugin to download. Um, if you were here at last week's session, uh, we're, we're not going to be using the plugin code from last week. There's an updated plugin. So if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to paste it in the chat. If you wouldn't mind downloading that plugin and uninstalling the current one, deactivating, uninstalling the current one and installing the new one, uh, I will walk through why there is a new one in a moment. Um, if you weren't here for last week, then please just go ahead and download that plugin. Um, and you can start installing it on your local WordPress install if you want to code along with me today. Um, I would also like to start, before I introduce myself, uh, I do see Tracy in the in the, in the, in the participants list. Uh, Tracy kindly offered to co-host with me today, but due to my own lack of getting things going early enough, uh, I was not able to onboard Tracy for co-hosting today. So Tracy, I apologize for that. Uh, but hopefully we can work together in the future. Um, okay, so for those who don't know me, my name is Jonathan. Um, I am from Cape Town in South Africa, and it's starting to get into winter in Cape Town. So it is raining. So I'm, you'll see how, those of you who join me usually on the Thursdays, I used to, I normally wear t-shirts. Now I'm starting to wear some warm tops just to keep warm in the office. Uh, I am a developer educator at Automatic, uh, and I'm sponsored to work with the training team, the WordPress training team. And the WordPress training team is a team of contributors and, and sponsored folks like myself who work on the learn.wordpress.org platform. Uh, I haven't linked to that in a while, so let me open that up in my window. Many of you will have been to this platform before. You may have even discovered these online workshops through this platform. Uh, and this is sort of WordPress's uh, official uh, online learning platform. There are tutorials, there are lesson plans, there are courses. And then right at the bottom is the link to all the online workshops where you can join them uh, and add them to your calendar and that kind of thing. Um, so this is the site that I spent most of my time on. Okay, um, if you if you would like to let us know in the chat where you're from, that would be lovely. It's always nice to know where folks are from around in the world. While I'm doing that, um, we'll chat very briefly about what we're doing today. Uh, so today is a continuation of last week's workshop. Last week's workshop was titled Common Vulnerabilities. Um, and about halfway through the workshop, I realized that I wouldn't get to all of them. So I took the specifically the uh, cross-site scripting, cross-site cross, cross -site request forgery, sorry, vulnerability and split it out into its own workshop today. Um, welcome Nordi from Peru. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, welcome Mary Beth from Manhattan. Um, so today we're going to be focusing specifically on the types of one or two of the types of cross-site request forgery vulnerabilities that could happen in a WordPress application or a plugin or a theme. Uh, and we're going to be looking at how we can mitigate those vulnerabilities using something called nonces. And we'll chat about what nonces are in a minute. Um, before we get started, a few announcements. Uh, again, welcome and thank you for joining me today. Um, please let me know if you can't see this announcement slide or any of the other uh, shared screens that I am sharing. I am sharing my desktop right now, so you should see my, my slides, uh, specifically this announcement slide. Uh, but we did pick up that there's a possible issue with folks joining on Linux des desktops. So if you can't see this, let me know, and I'll just disable and re-enable the screen share. Um, then we are, as always, presenting in focus mode. We have had, unfortunately, another uh, situation of Zoom bombing that happened yesterday. Uh, those of you who might remember a contributor by the name of Mark Andrew, uh, he's, his, his nickname in the Zoom chat is usually Nomad Skateboarding because that's what he does. He skateboards all over America and lives, lives a nomadic lifestyle. He was presenting a workshop yesterday on, I think it was developing a WordPress site on a mobile device. And unfortunately, some folks enabled their mic and just um, were loud or saying inappropriate things and, and sort of bombing the session. So that's why we present in focus mode. Um, this is also a warning. This could happen to us. Uh, so if anybody does jump on and start using inappropriate language, I'll apologize in advance, but hopefully we're all adult enough to just kind of mute it and ignore it and move on. Um, I consider myself fairly thick-skinned, so those kind of things don't generally bother me, uh, but I can only imagine for Mark, as he's, it was his first time doing this, it might have been quite disruptive. So 
Uh, that's why we present in focus mode. So focus mode means that I can see all of your video, or right now I can just see all of your names because your video is not enabled. Uh, you are welcome to enable your video if you would like to. You don't have to. But if you want me to see your face, you're more than welcome to enable your video. Um, as always, you are welcome. Hey, there's somebody who enabled the video. Hi there. Um, you are welcome to ask questions. Uh, you're welcome to unmute to ask questions or post them in the chat as we go through. Um, because I don't have a co-host with me today, all I would ask is that you just bear with me if I don't see your question immediately in the chat, because I have the chat window to my right here. And while I'm presenting on screen, I can't always look over to the right, but I will check the chat. I do pause for for sort of uh, minutes, seconds, minutes, whatever, to allow for questions and keep an eye on the chat and various other things. Um, okay, then... As I mentioned before, make sure your local installer is ready. I'm going to copy paste that link again for anybody who's joined recently. Uh, this is an updated version of last week's plugin. So if you have last week's plugin installed on your site still from last week's session, please deactivate it, uninstall it, and install this new plugin. I just tested this plugin before the session, so there should be no bugs in there. We fixed, I actually fixed that bug that, I can't remember who picked it up last week, but I fixed that, um, that is set bug that we picked up, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, then most importantly, and I feel like I should bold this item, uh, but I do tend to talk very fast when I get excited, and I do tend to get excited about software development and developing with WordPress, so it's a bad combination. Um, so if I'm ever going too fast, please just let me know in the chat, tell me to stop, tell me to slow down, ask me to, to pause on a screen, to copy paste code, I will go back to a screen if I've gone too fast with something. Um, the goal of these sessions is for you to learn as much as you can from them, not for me to spend the whole day talking or the whole hour and a half talking. Uh, Nordy says, stop drinking too much coffee. You're absolutely correct on that one, Nordy. Uh, unfortunately, the, the speed of which I speak is unrelated to my coffee drinking um, because I used to do it in high school and I didn't drink coffee in high school. It's just, a, a, I think it's either a personality trait or just who I am. Um, it's one of the reasons why I've never got into public speaking really as a career. This is the first time I'm actually doing this as part of my job. So I make sure to warn people up front. Um, and then as always, the session is being recorded and will be posted to WordPress TV afterwards. So if you are wanting to watch this later or if for whatever reason you've, you're not able to hang around, we will record this and post it afterwards. I usually post the link in the meetup chat the next day, which is when I publish it on WordPress TV. And then, as I mentioned earlier, all the other WordPress-focused content is on learn.wordpress.org. Okay, um, those are the announcements out of the way. I'm going to I'm going to follow Nordy's advice and have some water instead of coffee now. <laughs> um, our learning outcomes for today: we're going to spend a short time just recapping the vulnerabilities from the previous session. Um, I actually have, and I'm going to share this in the chat. If you want to, if you're watching this now, this on, on WordPress TV later, or if you are wanting to watch the session we did last week, this is the link for it. Um, in this one, we covered SQL injection, we covered uh, cross-site scripting, and we covered what was the other one? I've got it in my slides here. Um, and we just, we covered very basically the, the broken access control vulnerability. Uh, so if you're watching this on WordPress TV and you want to go back and watch that first, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but we will review those very quickly now just before we move on. Um, and then today we're going to be focusing specifically on what's known as cross-site request forgery or CSRF. Or actually, I think they just call it CSRF. That's like the, the anacronym for CSRF. I don't know what it is with, with techies and an acronyms, but anyway, it's CSIF. Uh, so we're going to be looking at that, and we're going to be looking at the way WordPress handles those with a thing called nonsense. Uh, now, if you're like me and you grew up with British English, a nonce means something else. So I apologize if that word is a trigger to you. I used to work with a British colleague, and he used to smile every time I used the word nonce because uh, it means something else. Don't look it up. It's not worth it, but it, it just is what it is. Uh, and we're going to be looking at two ways we can prevent vulnerabilities by working with a form submission and how we can implement nonces on a form submission and then how we can implement nonces on our as asynchronous requests. Um, and if there's time, I would also like to chat about something else around asynchronous requests. Uh, so we'll see how, how that goes. And then lastly, I'll just uh, share some links on where you can learn more about these vulnerabilities um, and how to prevent them in your, in your plugins and themes. Um, the objectives list is literally just a copy of what I just said. It's more just for myself. Um, there is still a bonus vulnerability in the plugin. So if you were here last week, I mentioned there was a bonus vulnerability. We'll see if we have time for that and chat about that briefly. But basically, it'll just be these five, six things we'll be doing today. 
Okay, before we get started, uh, does anybody have any questions, anything they need to know or want to know about everything we've just discussed? Uh, you can let me know in the chat. Otherwise, in about a 30 second break, we'll, we'll start getting things going. Um, while, if you are thinking about questions, while you are doing that, I just wanted to share another little resource with you all. Uh, when we did the very first session on plugin security or WordPress security or whatever it was, um, I mentioned a, a tool that folks use to test web applications. Uh, and I, and I remember the name of that tool. That tool is called Burp Suite. Um, I don't know why the word burp is used. It's probably again in an acronym, uh, but there is a community edition of Burp Suite that you can download for free and install. Uh, and to tell you why I discovered, I'm going to share this link in the chat. The reason I discovered this tool is because I was working uh, for a company at the time, and we had somebody who was a security pen tester who contacted us to say that they had discovered a possible, it was a broken, not a broken access control, but a privilege escalation vulnerability. In other words, a logged in user was able to access a different logged in user's information. Um, and... And so they, we asked them, well, how did you determine this? And they explained that they use this tool called Burp Suite. So I spent quite a bit of time learning to install Burp Suite and how to use it, uh, verify that the vulnerability was there, fix the vulnerability, and then we we paid them a bug bounty, which is sort of the standard process in, in, uh, in the web world. Uh, if somebody reports it um, ethically, in other words, they contact you directly and say, hey, we've discovered this and we're reporting this, there's typically a bounty. Um, so, so some folks actually do that as a job. And then you can set it up to um, sort of pause your web requests, and then you can play around with the the request data, the request method, all different kinds of things, and see if you can if you can hack your application. So I do recommend checking that out if you're somebody who is concerned about your web application security and you want to learn more. Uh, Portswigger, the company, I think is a security company, so I know they do have solutions for this kind of thing. Uh, they also have an academy where you can learn more, but there are also meetup groups around the world that and uh, that meet and teach the meetup groups how to use these tools. Um, so, so yeah, if security is something you're interested in, maybe I would have, if I could have gone back maybe 15 years and changed my career path, I would have loved to become a security pen tester um, and, and help help companies find vulnerabilities in their code. So this would have been the kind of tool that I would have been very interested in back then, but I'm a bit old and weary to, to change career paths again, <laughs> which is why I haven't looked into it. So I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, I recommend checking that out. Okay, um, let us get going. So I have already installed... Let me move this out the way. I have already installed the current plugin on my local site. You can see it at the bottom here. It is badly coded plugin version 102 beta. So if you don't have 102 beta installed, you've got the wrong version. Um, and you will remember if you were here for last week's session, Stuart says never too old. Uh, maybe, maybe I can become a security pen tester one day. Um, you remember that we required a few pages for our, our plugin to work. We had a form submission page. Going to open that page now, and inside of the form submission page, we added a short code. Uh, in the in the block editor, we use the short code plugin, uh, short code block. Sorry, not short code plugin. Uh, in the classic editor, you can just pop the short code in. The short code uses the WP Learn form short code uh, name, which I'm going to paste in the chat, and then you can apply a class uh, of either red or blue. Or you can leave the class out, and that is the bug that we found last week. So I'm actually going to do that to make sure that we fixed all of that. Um, I'm just going to leave the, the class out. And if we now view that page, oh dear, it looks like the bug is still there. That's fine. I'm going to just have a look at that quickly. I thought I'd fix this. Let's have a look. Oh no, it is still there. That's annoying. Uh, I thought I'd ship this fix with the code. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not important to our, our missions today. Uh, so I'm going to pop that class back in again. Um, read, and we'll update that. And we'll view that. And if you use red as the class, it outputs a red border. If you use blue as the class, it outputs a blue border. Um, and the form submission itself just allows you to submit a name and an email address. Then the other pages that we had, uh, and if you haven't got these on your local site, you can, you're can you welcome to create these now, and I will give you some time to do so. There is a form success page, uh, which contains any kind of content you want. The important part of this page is that the, the URL or the permalink slug for the page is 
either the the, the term form hyphen success hyphen page or you change the slug in the plugin which i'll show you in a second for my purposes i've just left it as the default form hyphen success hyphen page and that will be the page that gets redirected to if the form success the form submission is successful apologies um and then there is a form error page which follows the same uh syntax for the slug so instead of form hyphen success page it's form hyphen error page and again that gets used in the plugin um and this will be the page that somebody sees if the submission fails for whatever reason um so those are the three pages uh if you need to create them you're welcome to create them now creating the pages is not super super required for this plugin code uh, you will be able to code along with me even if you don't have these pages you'll just get a a wordpress error because the redirection is not working uh, but if you need to create those pages, you're welcome to do so now. Uh, and then I'm going to start looking at the code itself. While you're creating those pages, let me go back to my form success page and just show you the process of the submission. Um, oh, that's the success page, not the submission page. There it is, one sec. So this is the submission page. I'm just going to refresh this. And it's basically just an email and a name and email submission. So if we say Jane, and if we say Jane at gmail.com and we hit submit, it processes the form and then redirects to the form success or form error page. Okay. I'm going to say that if anybody needs me to stop because they're creating pages or they need to catch up, just give me a stop or a hold up or a chill out or relax or whatever in the chat. I'm going to move on otherwise, uh, but I will I will pause if we need to, no problem there. Um, the plugin code itself, let's go back to the plugin. We basically, at the top of the plugin, we have these constants that are set up, and these are the pages that the plugin is redirecting to. So there we will see the form success page slug and the form error page slug. Um, and then just very quickly, let's go through the plugin functionality. It creates a custom table to store the form submissions. I don't want to dive into this too much. Um, then the next function is enqueuing the admin JavaScript, which I'll show you what that does in a second. Uh, it basically uses Ajax to delete form submissions in the admin backend. I'll show you that page in a sec. Um, there is an enqueue scripts uh, set of functionality, which enqueues the red or the blue border uh, for the front end. Um, then there is the actual submission form shortcode. So it uses the add shortcode function to create the shortcode, sets up the callback, and this is where this should have um, fixed the bug. I don't know why it didn't. I'll check it in a second. It's not, it's not that important. Um, and then it renders the form. So it renders some HTML to render the form with the different fields, and it renders the, the class attribute for the styling. Uh, then below that is the function to process the form data. And somebody asked me last week, how is that happening? It's hooking into the WP action hook, checking if the WP learn form field from the form. If we scroll up, you'll see there's the hidden field, WP learn form. That's the name of the hidden field. If that field exists, in other words, it's been processed, uh, then fire off this code. It takes the name and the email uh, and, and inserts it into the into the database table and then redirects to either the success page or the error page. Um, I think I've just realized something. I might be working with completely the wrong plugin here. Just give me one second. Uh, no, I'm not. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, and then. There we were, submission. Okay, submission. Then after the submission, that's all the front end stuff. Then I start with the back end code. Um, to be honest, the way this plugin is structured is not ideal. I would have the front end code maybe in one file, the back end code in another file, but I've got it all in one file just to make life easy. But below that is the is the action to create an admin submenu, um, which is the page that shows all the form submissions in the dashboard. Uh, the, the callback to show those submissions is below that. And then there is a function which just gets all the submissions from the database to be used in the in the callback above so it gets used over here wp learn get form submissions um, and then right below all of that is the ajax callback to handle the deletion functionality um, so let me show you that deletion functionality right now very quickly uh, so if i was in the dashboard of the website and i go to the tools menu and i click on the wp learn admin page menu this is what the dashboard page might look like. Um, obviously, I would have preferred to have styled it better, but this is just for the purposes of a workshop. And here there is a delete button. Uh, the delete button contains the ID in the, in, the, in the HTML. It fires off a JavaScript request, which passes the ID to the, Ajax, uh, the admin Ajax endpoint. 
and will then delete that record from the database. Uh, it shows me a little bit of a message, which I can't see because the zoom window is over my screen, and then refreshes the page, and there the deletion happens. Okay, so that's the functionality of the form. Um, does anybody have any questions around any of that that we've just covered? Otherwise, we'll start reviewing all the fixes we employed last week. I'm going to have another sip of water while we do that. All right, I'm not seeing any questions. Naughty says, all good. Thank you, Naughty, for that uh, feedback. It's handy to know that, that folks are all on board. Um, okay, so let's very quickly review the different things we fixed last week, starting with, let me go back to my slides. We started with the SQL injection prevention. So the first thing that we did, uh, if you were here last week, was in the, um, in the form shortcode, in the learn form shortcode function, I'm just going to copy that there if you want to do a search for that in your editor. Uh, we, no, not there. Sorry. That's the next thing. Sorry. My apologies. In the processing of the form, in the WP Learn Maybe Process Form function. Um, the first thing we did was we sanitized the inputs. So we used the sanitize text field function to sanitize the name. And we used the sanitize email function to sanitize the email. Um, text field is perfect for any kind of normal text, email specifically for email addresses. The other thing that we did was this query, this section of code was using the WPDB query function and just running a standard SQL query uh, or SQL query uh, with the, the name and the email just inserted into that query string, which is another possible vulnerability because even though we're sanitizing the email and the name higher up, this code might change over time and then we might somehow expose those fields to either somebody else or be used in a different way and those fields could could have data injected so by using the uh, there's the insert function on the wpdb object that is used specifically for inserting data um, there's also a function called prepare which is to prepare a sql query and you, it allows you to pass in the variables and then have them sanitized for maybe a different type of query maybe it's a different insert or a different delete or whatever um, but that is the correct way to, to insert data into a custom table and make sure that data is safe. So that was the first thing we did. Um, and then the second thing we did, if we scroll all the way down to the, uh, the Ajax callback. So this is the function that fires when the Ajax request is made to delete the, the form submission. Uh, it's a JavaScript request that, that submits a request to the admin Ajax.php file in the admin uh, path in WordPress. We first of all, we ensured that the ID value was being sanitized. This time, instead of using a sanitize function, we used PHP's uh, typecasting functionality, and we put this int in brackets in front of the integer value. And basically, what PHP then does is says this must be a, a, must return a numeric value. So if you if if post ID, for example, I'm going to put this in a comment. If post ID was one two three Bob, then casting it to an integer would just return one two three. Um, if it was Bob, it would pass a return as zero. Uh, and then what you should then do is you should then check where the ID is greater than zero. And if not, also do some kind of exiting. But we didn't do that. Um, but basically, that's what this single line of code does. So anytime you're working with, with integers that are being passed around, it's always a good idea to cast them to an integer value. And then you know it'll always be the numeric. Um, and then we also changed again, we were using, if you have a look, and if you want to see what the original code for this looks like, I'm going to share that with you as well. Uh, it's in this plugin security repository. It's the, what I call the original uh, badly coded plugin. Um, you'll see all the, all the poor, the poor code there. It's, it all works, but it's insecure. Um, and I'm going to scroll right to the bottom and just zoom this in a little bit. Um, why is my zoom? Oh, zoom is, I need to use, no, that doesn't work. For some reason it's not working in my browser. So let's zoom in a bit here. There we go. Uh, you'll see down here, we were just using, we were setting up the SQL query and then again, just running get results, I think it was, which is also not really ideal for a deletion um, situation. So then we specifically use the WPDB delete function or delete method on the WPDB object. Um, and again, that will take the ID and prepare it if necessary. And if any, bad code gets in there somewhere, get rid of it, sanitize it, and do what it needs to do. So those are the changes we made in terms of SQL injection prevention. Any questions around that before we move on? Um, otherwise, I will check my notes. OK, 
Yeah, I think everybody's happy with that. So we'll move on to the cross-site scripting problems. Um, so the things that we fixed there, uh, I need to actually just check my notes here to remember because it's been a while. It's been a whole week, Jonathan. Come on, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> um, oh, yes. In terms of cross-site scripting, whenever you see cross-site scripting, you must think about, I need to escape my outputs. So anything that I'm rendering to the front end, I need to make sure that is clean. Because if anything, any JavaScript or anything else get ejected in that, the JavaScript gets run on the front end, and then it opens up my site to either be attacked or be used to attack other sites. Um, so the first thing that we fixed, uh, if we go back to the top of the plugin and we start scrolling down and we go to the, the form shortcode, um, here we go, where the class is, is being output from the um, shortcode attributes, we change it from just echoing the attributes class to actually wrapping that with the escape ESC underscore HTR function or escape attribute function. That is a func function specific to WordPress um, that allows you to escape specifically uh, HTML attributes. So if we were escaping maybe the ID or the class or any other attributes of an HTML element, we use escape attribute. Um, so that was the first thing we did. And then the second thing we did, if we scroll down to the render admin page, that's a backend related um, vulnerability there, we were, we were echoing the submission name, the submission email, and the ID. And so to fix that, we used ESCHTML for the submission name and email. Because ES, ESCHTML, it says it in the documentation, is specifically the correct function to use whenever you are escaping content that is wrapped by HTML elements. In this case, the element happens to be a table cell. So that's the perfect one to use. For the integer, we could have used escape attributes. Again, that would have been perfectly fine, but we could also cast it to an integer and the same thing will work. Um, so those are the things that we did there. And if memory serves, those are the only places where we found those kind of vulnerabilities. Yes. So those are the only changes we, we had to make there. Any And, and basically the, the, the trick or the tip that I suggested to folks was anywhere where you see the word echo, in other words, you're echoing something to a screen or you're using print in PHP, you should look for escaping that data. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, we didn't mention this last week, but I want to mention it now. And let's go over to the documentation. And um, WordPress escaping data. So all of this is in the developer resources, common API security section of the handbook. Um, so there are, for example, there is the escape HTML function. Let me zoom this in a tad bit. Um, but then there is also uh, the sort of built-in, I'm trying to see if they're here in this list. I don't think they are. Um, here we go. So escape HTML underscore E, for example. Um, so the way this works is it will, let me just check if it is this one. Uh, yes. So escape, escape, ESC underscore HTML underscore E. Um, let me share this link in the chat just so you can see what I'm talking about here. Um, it's, like a, it's like a special combination function. So if we have a look at the code of that function, which is down here, it takes the text, uh, you can translate it, but then it echoes it for you. Uh, and then there's another one, which I think is E underscore escape HTML. So there's a couple of them. So it'll save you a whole bunch of echoes. So you can replace it with these custom escaping functions that also echo out the content. So I do recommend when you're working with your escaping functions, um, there is a there is a much better list of, I think it was in the common vulnerabilities doc. Um, there's a much longer list of these things. I don't know if it's here. Um, escaping data. Somewhere there's a list of all of the functions, but I don't see it here. It's probably somewhere in the codex. I'll see if I can find it. Uh, here we go. Um, rather than use, yeah, they talk about escaping with the localization. Rather than using echo to output data, it's common to use the WordPress localization function, such as E or underscore blah, blah, blah. And then here it says, these functions simply wrap a localization function inside an escaping function. Um, so it's a great way of doing, hey, there's the list, escape HTML, yeah, we were there. Okay, I apologize. Um, so it's a good, good idea to know them as well. Uh, yes, let me pop this in here and I'll share that with everybody there. Okay, so it's a good idea to know the differences. Um, I tend to I tend to be a little bit more verbose. So I tend to write my code in the way that I've done it in this plugin where I use echo and then the escaping function. Um, but that's just because I'm weird that way. <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong with using these localization ones, which echo and escape at the same time. Uh, it's less code to write. 
Um, but I tend to use the echo because I come from a pre-WordPress world. I come from writing PHP code in HTML without any kind of framework or CMS, and that's how we, we output content. Um, but it's always better and easier to use built-in functionality. So if you if you can use these, these functions that echo and escape at the same time, I do recommend using them. Um, I did use them when I worked full-time working in WordPress, but now I can get away with going back to my old habits. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's one of those do do as it do as I do as I say, not as I do <laughs> type situations. Um, and then the last thing we covered was let me scroll down here, checking my notes, was the broken access control. Uh, there was only really one press, one place where this was happening. You see, I start speeding up and I fumble over my words. Um, and this was in the right at the bottom here in the admin Ajax callback in the WP delete form submission hook. Uh, the callback linked into that. There was no check. So this is an admin page, but there was no check whether the user that's clicking on the delete has the capability to actually delete that, that record. And the reason this is necessary is you might think, well, hang on, the person who is the admin, because of the way you set up sub the sub admin menu and you said manage options is the permissions for that sub menu page, nobody would get there. Yes, but the problem is because the Ajax request could potentially be triggered by any user, so somebody using Burp Suite, for example, could be a user on your site, uh, could inspect your, your code somehow, get hold of a plugin that you're using or whatever, find a vulnerability like this, and then just start hitting this form submission with ID numbers and start deleting form submissions. So whenever you're building this kind of custom functionality, it's always a good idea to make sure that the user is A, logged in, and B, can do the thing it needs to do. And the current user can function is like the quickest and easiest way to do that because current user can, will both check for a logged in user. And if it doesn't find one, throw an error. And then if it is a logged in user, check against the permissions. In this case, the manage options permission, which is specifically an administrator only permission. And if it's a false, if you say it's, it can't do that, then it'll return a, a false a response, a negative response, sorry. Um, so that was a nice quick and easy one that we, that we had to fix there. Okay, that was a whole half an hour, maybe half an hour, 20 minute recap of what we covered last week. Uh, are there any questions around all of that? Anything anybody wants to know? Um, if not, then then give me a thumbs up or a good to go or an okay in the chat. Um, and I'll wait for a couple of those before we before we move on. My my way of forcing you to interact with me. <laughs> okay, Nadi's good, Stuart's good. Okay, everybody seems to be happy today. That's great. All right. Um so the focus for today is specifically uh, cross-site request forgery. Now, if I could just get my notes back up again. Um, and it's actually kind of, it's kind of interesting that we ended up on this today because I tend to underestimate both the importance of this topic and how complicated it can be to present it. Um, I've actually given a plugin security talk a few times now. And every single time, the, the nonces section, which is what is used in WordPress to prevent um, CSERF, I'm, going to use, I'm just going to use the, the shorthand now, um, takes longer than I anticipate because it is quite an involved thing. With um, SQL injection, it's just a case of making sure you're, you're sanitizing your inputs and preparing your statements. It's fairly simple to implement. With um, cross-site cross -site scripting, you just have to make sure your, your outputs are us clean. You're escaping your outputs and then you're good to go. With, um, with the user facing stuff, you just implement current user can and you're pretty much good to go. There's not much more that you need to need to do for that. No problem, Mary Beth. Um, but with, with cross-site request forgery, it requires quite a bit of setup and implementation. And depending on the request that you're dealing with requires different setup and different implementation. So we're going to cover two setups today. And if we have time, we'll chat about a third one. And then if we'll have time, I'd actually like to show you an easier way to work around a vulnerability um, where you don't even have to worry about, uh, hopefully. <laughs> so the, the term or the function or the piece of thing that you're going to use to print um, CSERF is to implement what's known as nonces in, in your WordPress plugins or your WordPress themes. Um, a nonce is known as a number used once. Um, in, in, in the Laravel application, it has a slightly different term that it uses. I think they call it a CSRF token, 
which is a lot more difficult to remember. <laughs> um, once you know that nonce means number used once and you have that term in your head as that, then you're usually good to go. But basically, if you think about a nonce as a, if you think about a number used once, when the when the when the page is set up, so when the form submission is first rendered, or when the page is set up to submit the AJAX request, so before the actual request happens that is insecure, you effectively just create the number used once, and it has a value, um, and the value is unique to that session. And then when you make the request, you pass that number used once, that nonce in the request, and when the request is received you verify that number used once. And if that number used once is not verified, this is not a request that comes from our own website that we trust, and so therefore prevent execution. Um, and so there are a few places that you need to think about this and you need to do this. As I mentioned, we're going to cover two today. Um, the first one, and I'm, I'm last week I asked you to mention to me where these come from, but I've kind of given it away in the slides already. But the first one is in the form submission page. So if we go back to this form submission page here, this form submission, typically we would be using on the front end of our website uh, so that we want folks to be able to submit their data. And because we're submitting data, something could be uh, attempt, something could attempt to submit to that AJAX endpoint. So let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me open up my developer tools. If you've never worked with AJAX before, this might be uh, useful and interesting to you. Um, in fact, I want to go to network and I want to submit a request here quickly. I'm actually just going to refresh this page so that we can see it happening. So there is the request to the form submission page. So it's a get request. It makes a request to the web server. It says, I want whatever is sitting at the form submission location. WordPress then checks the shortcode runs and it runs the page and it renders the content. So then the next request I'm going to make, <clears throat> let me just close this one and I'm going to move going to clear my current network activity is going to be the form submission itself. So let's go with something like paul uh, at gmail.com. <clears throat> and when I hit submit here, which I can't do because the Zoom thing is over the way, so let me move that. There you will see, okay, it's already redirected, so you couldn't actually see it. Um, give me one second. I'm going to just make a change to my code quickly so that you can actually see the request. So let me go down here. And I'm just going to stop the submission from redirecting. You're welcome to do this along with me if you would like to. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm going into the um, into the maybe learn WP learn maybe process form function, <clears throat> and just after the WPDB insert code. The first line of code is the if zero less than rows line of code. There, I'm effectively going to comment this out. And what this will do is this will submit the form submission, but then continue execution and we'll end up back on the form page. Uh, no, sorry. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Sorry. It'll just stay on that page, um, which is what I wanted to do. Okay. So let me refresh this page. No, not the form success, form submission. There we go. Let me refresh this page and then we'll go. I don't think this might even work because the, the submission is going to submit and then that's fine. It should work. Um, I'm just thinking of this out loud in my head as I go along. So let's do the form submission. There we go. Okay. It, it tries to redirect. So we don't actually see the post. Um, it's not, it's not going to work, but effectively what happens is it makes a request to the form submission page and then it posts a bunch of data. Um, and Because this request, sorry, I'm just checking my notes in my head here. Because this request could be made from anywhere, um, we want to make sure that, and, and the reason you would do this is because maybe you haven't got your, your validation set up, or maybe some code has changed and you haven't fixed your code, and maybe there's some, some SQL injections or whatever the case may be. But anything that can make a request that your plugin can make a request to, external parties can also attempt to make a request to. Um, I could set up a, a burp suite or a postman request to the form submission page and try and pass in the right values and try and submit a, a form post to this to this endpoint. So we want to prevent that from happening. Um, I apologize for the rambling there. I was getting myself a little bit lost, but that's effectively what we want to prevent. So with form submissions, I'm going to uncomment this code quickly now. With form submissions, the first thing we need to do, as we mentioned earlier, we need to set up the nonce. 
And we set up the nonce using a function, which I'm going to find for you and find the documentation for, uh, called WP nonce field. So let me show you that function. <clears throat> And this is what it looks like, WP nonce field. Um, already, already putting it in the chat, Lisa. <laughs> um, so what this does is this will create a hidden field on the form, and I'll show you the form in a second, with based on a specific action and a specific name, and it'll generate the nonce for us. So that's the first step. We need to pair the form with the nonce field. So the way this works is, and I'm going to copy and paste this code for you as well once I've coded it, is Generally, you would put your hidden fields inside of your form element. In fact, you'll see here we've got a hidden field already, which is this learn, form, learn, learn form field that I'm using to check if the form is being submitted. So because WP uh, nonce field is a PHP function, we need to use the PHP tags to be able to use this function. So this is what the PHP tags look like. And then this is what the code could look like. I'm going to pop this in the form in the, in the page. And I'm also going to pop it in the chat, and then we can talk about it. So what this will do is this will create a nonce based on the first parameter, which is the action. You'll see I've, I've used the word action there so we can remember this is the action. This action this action field can be any string. You can call it my form nonce action. You can call it my action. You can call it whatever you want. You must just remember what it is because we need to use it later. And then the second parameter is the field name. So as you, as you probably know, if you've worked with HTML form fields, to be able to post the data, they need a name attribute. And generally the name attribute is the, is the same as the property being sent. So for the, for the name field, I'm using a name attribute of name. I apologize for the redundancy there. But for the email address field, I'm using a name property of email. And then that's how, when I process the form, I get the values. I get name from the post and email from the post. That's how I retrieve the data when the form has been posted. So what this is going to do for us is it's going to create the nonce and then create the field as well. The name of the field will be WP Learn Form Nonce Field, and the value will be whatever the nonce is. The action is stored somewhere else that only WordPress can access. And I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, it's stored in a transient somewhere or in the database or something. So that when we verify it, we look it up based on the action. And we will say, verify the nonce with this action name based on the value passed by this form name. Or this form field name. Okay, so let me show you what the field looks like first. So once, once you've inserted this field just underneath your hidden input using the PHP tags, and you render that form on your on your on your form submission page, which we'll get to here. And then I'm going to inspect this in my uh, developer tools, and I'm just going to zoom into developer tools quickly so it's a little bit bigger. You will see there is our own learn. WP learn form hidden field. That's from the code we wrote. And then just below that is another hidden field. The ID is WP learn form nonce field. That's the ID. The name is WP learn form nonce field, which is what we've specified. So it uses that for the ID and the name. And then it has the value, which is the nonce. The, that value there is the number used once. You'll notice that action uh, parameter is not anywhere on this. Because if it was, somebody could use the action and try and verify the nonce externally. We don't want that. Um, but that's what it creates in the form field itself. But now obviously we need to verify this as being safe and then we need to perform some kind of action. So now we move on to the, let me find my code here. We move on to the, into the code that processes this form data. Um, and this is one of the reasons why my example code is hooking into the WP action because it's easier to do it that way. Uh, really what you should do is have some other request somewhere that processes it and then and then render some content. I just try to keep it very, very simple. Um, and so what you would do here is fairly high up in your request, you would want to check A, was a nonce sent? And if it was sent, is it the nonce we expect? So I'm doing that just below this is the form being posted because I don't want the verify nonce to happen if the form wasn't posted. I'm going to just let execution happen and it, it'll skip over all the other code anyway, because if the form wasn't posted, it'll just this, this top section of code here. If that form wasn't posted, it'll just continue and it'll return. But normally you would have it right at the top. So just below that, this is what the code typically might look like. 
So you would say something like this. The, the function is WP ver verify nonce. I'm going to start by just pasting it in there. And I'm going to grab the documentation for that as well and share that with you. And I'll share the final PHP code as well once I'm done. But I want to sort of break it down step by step. So there's the verify nonce documentation. And you'll see that it requires the nonce string and then the action. Okay. So the nonce string is the actual nonce value that is passed in. Sorry, um, the zoom controls have moved over my toolbar and I can't click. There we go. So that's this value. So that I would be able to get from the post request object. And I would use WP learn WP learn form nonce field as in the post array to get that value. So that's the first thing I need. So getting back to the code, it's here. Using the post array, this is a default thing that PHP sets up whenever a form is posted. And it'll set up the WP learn form nonce field because that's the hidden field on the form. So that is the first parameter for WP verify nonce. The second parameter, <clears throat> excuse me, is the action we specified when we created the nonce in the form field. And that's where I, I'll, I'll share a little bit of a, a, a secret here with the world. This is what confuses me every time because when I create the form field, the nonce field, I do the action first and then the field name. So when I verify, I tend to think I must do the action first and then the field value. But no, it's the other way around. So remember this, if you're using the hidden field, it's action then name. When you verify, it's value then action. Okay. So verify nonce will return a true or a false value if the nonce is verified. So we want to be able to use that true or false value. So it could be as simple as something like saying if and wrapping that if statement around WP verify nonce. And we say, if, if this is true, uh, then go ahead and continue processing. Uh, a quicker, a, a sort of a quicker, easier way to do this would be similar to the way I'm doing this at the top here. And we do what we call early returning or early guarding. So we say, if not, which means if that response to verify nonce is false, then just simply return, which basically just exit out of this execution and doesn't attempt to process anything further. That could be as simple as it is. But there's a problem with this code. And the problem with this code is, um, what if the nonce hasn't been posted in the form? I should actually return even before that. So what I ideally would want to do would be something like this. I would want to say, just slightly higher up, I might want to say something like this. If not, is set the form field. Just the same way as I did the not is set WP learn form. So here I am saying, if the form field isn't even set in the first place, don't even do the verification, just return immediately. Um, and that's a nice quick way of exiting and making sure nothing else happens. So that would be the first thing I would do is I would check, was the field that I set up passed in the submission? If it wasn't, just end execution right here and there, don't go any further. If it has been passed, great, we can move on to the next step. And we can say, if it is verified, Oh, sorry, if it's not verified, then again, exit execution, don't continue. Otherwise, if this is true and that is true, then we're happy and we're saying, yes, this is a request. I'm going to copy paste this into the chat so long so that folks can grab it while I'm talking. Uh, we will say, yes, this is a request we're happy with. We can now continue to go ahead and process this data. Then last but not least, I just want to mention that it is also possible to combine these two. Um, and you can do something like this. You can say, if not is set, the field, or those two lines mean or, it's not verified. Then we could return, or even better, we could redirect to the error page. So if the nonce isn't set, we've, because the plugin has got the error page set up, redirect to the error page. Now, the reason you might want to do that, I want to share, share some information here with you. I'm going to paste this code in the chat as well. If somebody is trying to hack your site, if you didn't have the redirection in place, they're going to see, oh, there's no kind of redirection somewhere else. Um, maybe if I keep digging, I'll see an error message. The error message might expose some data. Um, little, little unknown thing about not so much WordPress, but PHP in general. If you haven't got your PHP security configured correctly, certain errors can actually, or used to be able to, I don't think they can anymore, but they used to be able to expose your MySQL username and password. Uh, this was a number of years ago. I think it has been fixed since then. Um, but not having some, some 
action, some redirection to some page that displays to a user if things aren't being verified is also a possible security vulnerability because you might just throw like a default PHP error or a default WordPress error, which actually gives the attacker more information. Um, so it's always a good idea to actually redirect to a specific error message. You might think it's 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 uh, only going to be read by a human, but it could also be read by, and then it would just be, a, oh, something went wrong with the form and there's no further information that you're giving away. So it's always a good idea to redirect to something. Um, you know, redirect to the 404 if you want to, you know, page not found, that's also perfectly acceptable. That's why the 404 page generally doesn't exist. You can just redirect to that. Um, I, I saw once, it wasn't an application that I was working on, but I saw once where an application, a Laravel application, they hadn't set up the default 404 page. And every time an error happened on the page, you saw the, the sort of the debugging information presented on screen, which is a security vulnerability. Um, so it's always a good idea to redirect to some human readable page and, and therefore not expose further information about, about what you have set up. Okay, so I'm going to leave the top two. I'm going to take the top two out and leave the bottom one just because that is slightly better. Uh, and I'm going to take a break there before we continue and see if there are any other questions around any of that, what we've just covered in terms of form submissions. Okay, I don't seem to have questions, so we're going to move on. Um, the other place we have a possible CSERF vulnerability is in the AJAX request. So I'm gonna pop right down to the bottom here. So while we are checking that there's a valid user, what we're not doing is checking, is it coming from this website? Now let's chat about the theory behind this for a second. Having the current user can check could be considered enough. Because if an external party sent requests to this Ajax endpoint, they typically wouldn't be logged in as a user and it would fail. The problem though, is you might have built a, a website, excuse me, that has different logged in users and somebody's user credentials might get leaked somewhere. And somebody might be able to, and because of the fact that user logins are effectively just hitting the login page on any application, not just WordPress, any application. It's finding the login URL, hitting submit with the username and password, and then either storing a cookie or storing some kind of session, and then you're an authenticated user. Um, and now this is where, this is a little bit of a tangent, so I apologize, but this is where some folks think, oh, the way to fix this is to hide your login URL. You know, there's these plugins that change the login URL to something else, or they append a variable or whatever. At the end of the day, that's still a valid URL, even if it's a, even if it's not WP hyphen login, even if it's admin slash Bob slash access slash user, you still have to access that login on a web browser, which means it's still public. So it still is open to possible vulnerabilities. So whenever you're doing any kind of um, asynchronous requests using Ajax, you should really be uh, checking for CISO vulnerabilities. You should be checking that it's coming from the trusted site, your site that, that, that you're building or that your plugin or your theme is, is installed on. And you would use nonces to do that. Okay. So just as we set up a nonce for the, um, for the form, we need to set up a nonce for the Ajax request. Now, the only place that we can set this up because the way Ajax works, and I'll pop over to the admin JavaScript file, the way Ajax typically works is we create, in this case, it's a jQuery request. You could be using something like Axios, which is a, a, a JavaScript library for, for creating requests. It's going to create a post request and it's going to require a URL to be able to make that post request too. In this instance, the URL just happens to be the WordPress Ajax URL, which if we go back to the PHP file and we scroll right up to the top here, we've specified here as the admin URL with the word admin ajax.php. If you've never seen that before, that's the default way that WordPress handles Ajax requests. I'll show you what it looks like in a, on the front end in a second, but we need to set up the nonce to pass it in with this request data here. So this is the request data. We're passing in the action and the ID to make that request happen. We need to pass a nonce into this request data. 
So let me show you what that looks like on the front end before we set up the nonce. Uh, I'm going to find the what I need to look for is uh, the WP Learn admin, sorry, the WP Learn Ajax object in my HTML. So I'm going to switch back over here and in my elements, I'm going to search for uh, WP Learn Ajax. Oh, wait, sorry, it's in the, it's not on the front end, it's in the, in the admin dashboard. So let me pop on over to the dashboard. Um, it's in this learn admin page. So let's find that. Where are my tools? Here we go. Tools, learn admin page. So it's when the deletion is happening, which is an Ajax request. And if we now search for this, there it is. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it on the screen. So there, what that, what, so to understand this, if you've never seen this before, what this code does, this localized script passing in the, the admin script handler and the learn Ajax name and this array, it essentially passes, it ends up creating a variable called WP Learn Ajax. And that variable is an object. And inside of that object, the first field is the Ajax URL. And that URL is the path to the local site, WP slash WP admin slash admin Ajax.php. So that is the file or the, the URL that's going to accept the Ajax request. It accepts the data we send it, and then it, it fires off the Ajax hook, which is the hook we've specified right at the bottom of this code here. So it fires off this hook here because we've set this up as delete form submission. It will create and fire the WP Ajax delete form submission hook because we've hooked this callback into that hook, then this code runs. And that's how Ajax works in WordPress. I'm planning a tutorial on that for the future. So if that wasn't fully understandable to you, it is coming, don't worry. So we need to now get a nonce in here somehow. So to do that, we're going to update this WP Learn Ajax object, which is in the right at the top here in the learn NQ script function. So it's where localized script happens. There's WP Learn admin, WP Learn Ajax, array Ajax URL. We're going to pass the nonce in over here. So I'm just going to call it nonce. Uh, it doesn't matter too much what it's called. And then I need to actually create this nonce and pass it through. So to do that, we can use the WP create nonce function. So I'm going to just copy some code quickly here and show you what that looks like. And then I'll share uh, links with you. So there's WP create nonce. You'll see that it just has, it just requires one parameter, uh, which is essentially the action. Um, in this case, WP learn Ajax nonce, we could have called it action. I'm just calling it Ajax nonce because I'm going to use it for all my Ajaxes. Um, and that's all we need to pass. So let me get that documentation and share it in the chat with you. There it is, WP Ajax nonce. And as you can see, the first parameter is the action parameter. It's the same as the form. It doesn't require a field because it's not creating a form field. Then we need to um, set that variable up in the object. So there it is over there. And I'll send you the updated code for that in the chat. So that's what it looks like. If we now refresh that admin page, and we have a look for that learn Ajax um, code again. Let me open up DevTools. Uh, let me find the elements and let me search for Ajax, I think it was. Uh, am I going to find it now? No, it wasn't that. Which one was it? WP learn Ajax. Yeah. Why is it not finding that? Have I broken this? <laughs> It's very possible I've broken this. Um, Ajax nonce, Ajax nonce. Let me just take this out and see what I've done here. Don't you love it when the person presenting breaks things on live on? Well, that's largely annoying. Um, Did I mess with the JavaScript? It's very possible that I messed with the JavaScript. It doesn't look like I have. I wonder if the create nonce is incorrect. Let's try this. Just resetting everything back to what it was. Sorry, my fat fingers are breaking things here. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, 
Ah, that's frustrating. Um, it was working and then it stopped working. It's always fun. Hang on. Let me see if this deletes. Okay, maybe I'm searching incorrectly here. Oh, I am. <laughs> I'm searching in the wrong screen. What a silly person. That was fun. There it is. Okay. Oh, dear. Dev tools let me down there. I was searching in the wrong screen. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> um, so let's do... No. So let's leave that as it was. And let's go back. And now this is... My 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 mistake is now recorded for all time, which is which is beautiful. Um, so we'll create the nonce. There we go, and we'll pass it in. I could just edit this out before I upload it, uh, and then nobody has to see it. <laughs> just you folks. Uh, okay, let's put that in there. All right, that should now be there. So let's refresh. And then it's searching the correct place. There it is. Okay. Oh, dearie, dearie me. I was searching in styles, not in the elements. Okay. So there's the Ajax object, and you'll see, oh, I've spelt it as none, but there is the nonce there. Let's fix that problem. Uh, not none, but nonce. But you see, it doesn't actually matter. Whatever I call it doesn't actually matter because I'm just going to reuse it in the JavaScript. Um, so it's actually maybe even a good idea to not call it a nonce to call it a token or a key so that it's not obvious what you're using it for. Um, I'm just using nonce today because it, it it makes it easier for you folks to see what I'm doing, but it's probably a good idea to maybe use something else like a token or, or something. Um, but now that the nonce is there, what this means is this is available in the WP Learn Ajax object so we can pass it into our Ajax request. So if we go over to the JavaScript, we can now at this point here, we can add a new element or a new property to the to the data being posted. Now, the important thing to understand here is that when you pass this nonce, you need to pass it in a very specific format. Um, and if you have a look at the documentation that I pasted earlier, the create nonce documentation, I think it does actually specify this in the documentation. Um, so let's just scroll down and find it. Um, Uh, it doesn't actually specify, but if you have a look at this example here, you can use the create nonce functionality and you can and you can pass things around. Um, is this the one that we used? Um, yeah, it is. I think it's I think it might be in the plugin handbook. Let me let me find let me find that for you. Uh, let me do a search here. Can I actually talk about this specific property? Um, Oh yes, that's right. So it's in the function that we're going to use to check the nonce and it's in the checks, check Ajax referrer. And you'll see that here it says the key to check for the nonce in request. If false, the, re the return values will be evaluated for Ajax nonce and or WP nonce in that order. So you can actually specify a specific nonce to be, to be checked. Um, and I'm gonna paste this in the chat, no problem Stuart. Uh, but if you don't specify a specific nonce to be checked, then you must use either Ajax nonce or WP nonce. So I tend to prefer to use Ajax nonce uh, just because I'm using Ajax requests. So in my Ajax code, very specifically, I always use specifically Ajax underscore Ajax underscore nonce. And then I'm going to pass in the nonce value. And that is currently sitting. If I show you on the front end, if we go back to here, that's currently sitting in the learn Ajax object in the nonce property. So then what that means is just like I can refer to the learn Ajax object here and the Ajax URL, I can do the same thing and I can say with a semicolon WP learn Ajax, that's the object. And then I can search for the nonce property. So like that, I'm going to, and then I've got to put in a comma or it's invalid. I'm going to copy this into the chat as well. So you can see that change. Um, but that's me passing the nonce from the, from the object to the request. So that'll now get passed to the request. So I set up the nonce using create nonce and then adding it to the learn Ajax object using localized script. I can define any value for this property if I want to. I've just chosen to call it nonce here today. 
Then in my JavaScript environment, I need to set it up in the request. So when I'm creating the post request to the Ajax URL, I need to specify either Ajax underscore Ajax underscore nonce or underscore WP underscore nonce, one of those two. Then I need to do the check. Now, the nice thing about this being an admin interface, it means I can use this check Ajax referrer function that we, we mentioned earlier. Um, and the cool thing about checking the Ajax referrer is that it will do a whole bunch of checks and then show a, a error to the user if there's a problem. And because it's in the admin interface, um, we don't have to worry too much about showing incorrect information. Um, but you could also do a similar thing like checking it um, and then returning as need be. So if you have a look at this code, um, effectively what it does is it gets the request. Uh, so this is the this is the code for check Ajax referrer. It gets the the the, the query or, or Ajax nonce or WP nonce, whichever one, and then it simply uses WP verify yeah, WP verify nonce. So it uses the same code we were using earlier. And then based on that, it'll then do certain things. It'll check Ajax referrer and die and whatever else. It does a whole bunch of other things. So you could do this yourself. Uh, you could do you could take this code and say result is WP verify nonce, the nonce being the post request, in this case, the action being Ajax nonce, and you could specify your own, or you could just use something like uh, check Ajax referrer. I think it should actually, I just um, realized something, small correction. Um, I think it's actually check admin referrer for admin. Uh, yeah, it's check admin referrer. There we go. So let me send you that one um, from another admin page with secret security. Not, sorry, I am wrong. Sorry. Check admin referrer you use when you are redirecting from one admin page to another. My apologies. Check Ajax referrer is the one you use specifically for Ajax requests. Um, so as you mentioned in, in, the, in the first plugin security, use the right function for the right functionality. Uh, so Ajax referrer is correct. So all we then have to do in our in our code, uh, if we go to the Ajax callback, we can then say, right, check the Ajax referrer. And then it will show correct information and do various things if that Ajax referrer fails. Um, and that's all you have to worry about. So now your nonce is in place. Let's check if the form still works with all that code in place. Uh, so if I go to my form first i'm going to just my form shouldn't be affected but i'm going to just check it first uh so let's go back to pages uh, and let's go and view form submission again and let's go with my sons were playing the name game this morning in the car so i've got a whole bunch of names in my head uh, if you don't know the name game i'm happy to explain it to you in a second but uh, let's go with nathan so nathan submitted that seems to have worked let's go back to the dashboard Let's go back to the admin page that we created. There is Nathan. Now the deletion should work as well. We were doing the nonce verifications and the form has been deleted. And there we go, it is all still working, but at least now it's working with extra security. Um, and you can test how all this, this stuff works by, for example, let's actually do this. Let's remove the check Ajax referrer um, and see what happens when we submit that. So let me refresh this page and we should see that it might say deleted, Okay, it actually does delete. So there's a bug somewhere there. It shouldn't actually have done that. Um, it should have thrown me some kind of error. That's interesting. Um, oh, that's why I wasn't implementing things correctly, was I? WP learn Ajax nonce. That's interesting. Um, oh, I removed the check. So, oh, that's. So, all I did was I removed the check which meant everything else is going to continue. So what I should have done was left the check, but removed the actual nonce. That would have tested if it works. You see, I can't even test my code properly. Um, so let's remove the nonce. That will be the correct check. So let's take out the nonce. There we go. And let's try and submit that page. Uh, so now if we go here and we try and delete this, nothing happens. Uh, and if I open up developer tools and we switch to the console, we should see some kind of error which is exactly what we want. So now we know the verification is in place. If the nonce isn't passed, it's going to fail. Let's check if passing in uh, incorrect nonce works. Um, so let's leave the nonce in. And this is a good way to test these things when you're coding with this. Don't just assume it's going to work. Uh, remember, that those of you who were here for the very first plugin security we did, always be checking, even your own code. Um, and we'll talk about unit tests one day as well, how we can test this automatically. But let's create a nonce. So here we've got WP Learn Ajax nonce, right? So let us verify for a different nonce action. So let's say we want to 
verify for this. So that's correct code, but the two actions don't match up. So now we should also see some kind of error. Uh, so let's do that. And I'm starting to talk fast because this gets me excited. <laughs> um, so let's delete that. And again, we see a forbidden error. Um, so now we know our code is doing what it should do. So even there, we created a valid nonce, but we didn't check for that nonce. So now we know we need to fix that bug in our code. Okay. Any questions around how to verify those nonces, form submissions, AJAX requests, anything around that uh, while I slow myself down and have a refreshing sip of water? Okay, there don't seem to be any questions. The last, there's two more things that I wanna quickly discuss. Um, the first one is a better way of doing your AJAX requests. We're not gonna dive too deep into this today, but those of you who were here for my, um, my REST API uh, uh, workshops, I've started to record some of those workshops as tutorials on WordPress. And one of the things that I mentioned is that in the specifically in the interacting with WordPress REST API, I'm going to share both the using with and the interacting with the WordPress REST API videos in the chat, uh, because I think those are good resources to know. Um, I will do my best to update these in my slides before I upload this to WordPress TV. So hopefully if you're watching this on WordPress TV, these links will be in my slides as well. But in the interacting with WordPress REST API uh, video, I talk about how you can use the WordPress REST API to replace your AJAX requests. And you use something called a backbone JS client for the JavaScript side, and you use the REST API for the, for the receiving of the data. And the great thing about going with that route is you don't then have to worry about the nonce checking because the backbone client and the REST API already work together and do those checks. So if you're using backbone JS in your plugins to submit your data in your backend, the nonces aren't a problem for you. So that is another way that you can prevent those vulnerabilities. In fact, that is my, my top tip for today. Um, if you are going to be building a plugin or a theme that needs to interact with the WordPress database in an asynchronous way in JavaScript, I would rather recommend you use the WordPress REST API and the Backbone JS client to do that um, because that will make your code less, sorry, more secure by default because you're using these built-in tools. That's top tip number one. And then lastly, I mentioned about the bonus security vulnerability. Um, if anybody went and checked the code that I shared last week, it was, it was hidden in there. But essentially, it's this. Um, I don't think I'm doing, let me see if I can find where I am doing it incorrectly. But I think I actually fixed it by accident while I was preparing this, this, uh, this plugin. Um, I'm just going to, here we go. So in this nonce field code we were looking at earlier, I'm using WP redirect to redirect to the error page and that in itself is another vulnerability because wp redirect should only be used when redirecting outside of your wordpress site if you are redirecting internally there is a special function which i'm using down here called wp safe redirect and you should use safe redirect to redirect to pages internally into your site because using safe redirect prevents those redirections from also being hijacked um, if you're redirecting externally for whatever reason, maybe there's a link on your page and you want to in PHP direct a user somewhere externally, we don't mind if somebody hijacks an external URL because it's not going to expose anything. But if it's any kind of internal redirection, especially if you're redirecting in an admin environment, you're creating settings pages and on submission, you want to redirect somewhere else, rather use WP safe redirect than WP redirect. I will share the link um, to that documentation in the chat as well. That's just a little, a little tip to remember um, if you're ever working with plugins that need to redirect anywhere else, use WP safety redirect for internal local redirections. Um, and it says checks whether the location is using an allowed host. So it's similar to nonsense, it checks whether where I'm redirecting to is a safe host that, I, that I'm happy to use. Um, okay, that is my bit for today. Um, I hope you have, I hope you have enjoyed that. I hope you have learned how nonsense work and, and how you can use them. Um, does anybody have any other questions before we wrap up today? Otherwise, we will we will call it a day and go off and enjoy our Thursdays. I would also mention, while well, folks, if anybody is, is posting any questions, all of these workshops that I'm doing this year are going to be turned into tutorials as well. Um, 
I think I shared, I think I've already redirected back from that. So my plan for 2023, my, my sort of personal goal for 2023 is that all workshops become tutorials so that anybody who wants to see the abbreviated shortened version of this content can go and check it out on, um, on learn.wordpress.org. Stuart says, is there any WP specific documentation on the backbone JS and API press? Stuart, there is indeed. Um, if you go to, I'll actually take you there now. If you go to developer.wordpress.org, uh, for some reason, theme JSON has been remembered in my history from last year so many times. Um, I'm going to paste that in the chat. And then if you go down to the common API section and you click on utilize APIs, there is an entire section dedicated to, where is it now? Uh, wait, hang on. To the REST API which then takes you to the REST API handbook. It's an entire handbook on its own. Um, you can actually also, I'm going to go back to the developer.wordpress.org homepage. There is actually right at the bottom here, there's, there's a whole section on the homepage dedicated to the REST API handbook. So you scroll down to REST API, click make applications, and it talks you through how all this works. Um, the using the REST API section is what I focus my first set of tutorials and workshops on. And then there's also the extending the REST API where you can do various things. Um, but everything you should need to know is in this documentation. So if you want to go that route, I highly recommend reading through the docs. Um, I am also busy preparing all the tutorials around that content. And eventually I'm going to create a little short course based on that content. So if you want to do that, that's also an option, but that's unfortunately only in the future. Okay. Um, any other questions before we wrap up today? Uh, I would like to thank you for joining me. I, I know that Plugin security or theme security or WordPress security is often something that folks tend to forget about sometimes. Um, I, would, I would challenge you to always be thinking about security, always be thinking about um, how your code is, is being used, how your code could be used for nefarious means. Uh, and whenever you're working with data, inputting data, accessing data, um, uh, uh, Lisa, I'll get to your answer, your question in a second. Think about security and think about where things can go. Um, REST in API stands for representational state transfer. Um, it's just it's just specifically an architectural style. Um, for the for the I would say kind of easy to read and understand explanation of that, I would just go to the Wikipedia article on REST API. Uh, on representational, represent, represent, I can't even say the word, representational state transfer. Um, and really it just means how the data is passed back and forth uh, and sort of the guidelines around REST. Um, but that's a whole, that's a whole different topic. Um, cool. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Um, next week, we're going to be looking at user roles and capabilities and how we can use those in our plugins and themes and how they work. Um, so please do join me for that. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. And when you get there, enjoy your weekend. Thanks very much.